Hi YouTube and welcome to my channel. My name is Patrick. Today I have something to show you. This is a cable, but it is so much more than that. You may be able to tell there's something funny going on because on this end it's an RJ45 uh, Ethernet adapter and on this end it's a USB-C cable. Uh, but this is not a network adapter of any kind, although it can be with the right programming. You see, this right here, this is an entire Linux computer in the size of a single cable, and this is made specifically for pen testing. That's right, this cable is a little Linux hacking computer. I'm going to show you how it works and some fun things you can do with it. So with all of that being said, let's dig right in. Alright, so I've got it plugged in and starting up right now, but before we get into the nitty gritty details, let's talk about the specs. This thing has a whopping 64 megabytes of RAM and 64 megabytes of user writable storage. So you're not exactly going to be storing any games on here, however it is more than adequate for the small amount of stuff that you would need something like this to do. I know 64 megabytes of RAM sounds like too much to get anything done, but you'd really be surprised how lightweight a lot of hacking tools are. And the thing is literally running Linux. It's a distribution based on Debian that I believe Hack5, the developers of this product, I believe they customized it for this. Now, it has not gotten updates in years. So this, ironically, although it is a pen testing, security testing tool, it is not very secure in and of itself, which is kind of ironic. But that's okay, because it's only meant to be present on a network for a very short amount of time. You would take this with you when you're going out into the field to do some red teaming. You would plug one end into power, the other end into the network, and then it will automatically execute whatever payload that you have set up in it. So enough yapping, let me show you how to actually work with this thing. Okay, so what you'll want to do is plug it into the Ethernet port on your computer and make sure that it's in arming mode. Once it's in arming mode, you can set your network adapter to an IP address similar to the one on screen. And once that's done, you can SSH into it. So I'll just enter my password and boom, we're in the shark jack. Now I hope you see what I mean when this cable is literally a Linux computer. It's an entire Linux computer in the form of a single cable. Now, if your mind isn't racing with possibilities of what you can do with this thing, let me show you a couple part, a couple things that I cobbled together. Okay, so if we do an ls, you'll see there's uh, something in here that is payload.sh. So payload.sh, that is the name of the file that it will execute when it's in armed mode and plugged into a network. So we can, uh, we're actually going to go into the payload directory that I have here. And we're just going to vim payload.sh. So this is one that I wrote, and it's a good example to show you some of what this is capable of. So you can see, uh, first of all, it, it has these special commands you can use that manipulate hardware functions, like the LED on it. Uh, so you can have it blink different colors when it's in different stages of your payload. So you can see there's some configuration items here at the top where I'm defining some variables. We've got the nmap options because this is doing a network scan. We've got the loot directory, so this is where it's going to store the results of the scan. And it's got a remote IP and a remote port. So what's all that about? Well, well, we'll get to that. So basically it checks to make sure the loot directory is there, and if it isn't, it creates it. And then it gets an IP address from the local DHCP server. And then what it will do is change the LED color and then uh, start the nmap scan. And the nmap scan is going to scan the network, and then we're going to open a reverse shell. So I know that was a whole lot of information real quick at once, so I want to break down in detail some of the things I was talking about. So when I say it's doing an nmap scan, nmap is a tool that's used to scan a network and scan open ports on various hosts. It runs on just about anything with a processor, and it's very lightweight, making it perfect for something with 64 megs of RAM. Another thing that I did was open a reverse shell. 
So basically what this means is it's going to take the commands line of the shark jack itself, the, the shark jack's commands line interface, and it's going to pipe it to a server of my choice. Now this allows me to interact directly with the shark jack while it's plugged in at a client's location, meaning it gives me remote access to the shark jack which is on the network. And obviously, if you're probably thinking, well, that opens up a lot of possibilities for hacking on the fly. That is pretty much all that this payload does. There's a couple other ones here. So we have payload two. Uh, this one was written by hack five. I believe this is just the, yeah, this is the default payload that it came with. Uh, it's a little bit fancier than mine. You can see that I used this as a basis for the one that I wrote. Um, and that's really all there is to show in here. You can see we're using uh, 20 megabytes of our 64 megabytes of RAM. Uh, <laughs> and uh, you can tell this thing does not have very much horsepower. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's idling at like 3% CPU usage, which is really impressive. I, w I wonder, hold on, Hold on a moment, let me look up what kind of CPU this thing has, because I honestly don't know. Okay, so it's rocking a 580 megahertz MediaTek MT7628 MIPS CPU. So that kind of explains why the power draw is so, so little. And I just want to point out, oh, I should have turned it off before I unplugged it, but I just want to point out, that this little cable, this literal cable computer that I have right here, has a stronger processor than my big bulbous eMac that I've got sitting in the corner there. So like, the idea that this has more horsepower than that whole thing is really kind of mind-boggling to me. But anyway, this was just a short little video showing you a fun little gadget that I've got. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it for you. If you want to see more videos like this, consider subscribing. If you liked the video, there's a thumbs up icon. We've confirmed through months of testing that that thumbs up icon right there, that's the like button. If you've made it this far in the video, leave a little clown emoji in the comments. I'm going to forget that I said that, so when I see a bunch of clown emojis, I'll think that I did something embarrassing. Think of it as playing, helping me play a little prank on my future self. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.